Assalamu alaikum and good morning to all of you. I would like to start off with the introduction of every member in this group, such as myself, Abdul Hamid Alonto, Muhammad Nasif Batugan Ating, and Hana Bakarat Amir. And we are the group two, reporting all about ancient Greece and Rome art. And to start off, we would like to ask Muhammad Nasif Batugan Ating to start reporting about ancient Greece. Okay, so assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi ta'ala wabarakatuh. Greetings of peace everyone. I am Muhammad Nasif Batugan Ating and I am here to discuss to you the first part of our group's discussion which is all about the Greek art. So let's start first with the history of the Greek art. So where did the Greek art started? So it is said to begin in the prehistoric, pre-Greek, Cycladic and Minoan civilization. So basically, it happens or it occurs on the Bronze Age which is dated way back 3300 to 1200 BCE. So the art of the ancient Greek is usually divided statistically into four periods. The geometric periods, the archaic period, classical period, and the Hellenistic period. So the mi the middle of the 5th century BC, it is known to be the golden age of the Greek art. So what are the types of ancient Greek arts that were in the golden age? So there were three types of ancient Greek arts that, uh, that is being uh, created in the golden age. So first one is drama, second one is literature, and third one is the architecture. So for the drama, these are the plays that the ancient Greeks are conducting or the ancient Greeks are doing. So most of these dramas are about the tragedies that happens on the Greek civilization. So next one is for the literature. So these literatures are usually uh, related towards the Greek civilization lang then. So the literatures that were created by the ancient Greek on the Golden Age were usually uh, related to the Greek goddesses. So these are the literatures that are, that are about Odyssey, uh, Zeus, or any other Greek goddesses. And the third ancient art that they create on the Golden Age is the architecture. So for their architecture, there are three types of architectures that are being created at this golden age. So first one is the Ionic style. So what is Ionic style? It is used as an elaborate base and capital in the form of scrolls. So basically, these are what is shown in the picture. So they are using an elaborate base um, in form of scrolls. So next one is the Doric style. It is a simple, heavy column without a base topped by a plain capital with no ornamentation. So if in Ionic style they are using a base form of scroll, in Doric style it is a heavy column without a base. Um, it is plain capital and no more extra ornamentation. So it is very plain. And the third one is the Corinthian style. It is the most elaborate design among the Greek architecture. It is elongated and decorated with leaves. So with these uh, three types of design, the Corinthian style is the most elaborate one. It is the most decorative one. It is decorated with elongated um, different styles of leaves. So let's jump on now on the Greek sculptures. So there were two distinct periods of when Greek created sculptures. It is the classical period and the Hellenistic period. So let's start first with the classical ones. What are the sculptures that are being created in the classical periods? So Greek sculptures were interested into human form moving in space. So basically in classical periods, the, uh, the sculptures that are being created are about the about human forms. So basically these are those human form sculptures that are that looks like moving. So yun yung basis nila during classical period. 
and in the Hellenistic period, aesthetic beauty was less important to the sculpture for the time period, so they were interested in showing emotions on the faces of the sculptures. So, unlike the first one, the classical period, where in it, they interest on the moving fig figures of um, uh, human, in Hellenistic periods, the uh, the interest was shown or first focus in showing the emotions of the faces of the sculpture. So I think that will be the end of my presentation. Thank you so much. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi taala wabarakatuh. And now we come to the archaic period, which started at 600 to 400 BCE. It means that in this period, the artifacts that are found are still outdated, but can be found still today. Vase painting back then was an important art form because this is where they would usually tell stories of a human accomplishments or even telling the story of the mythologies like the gods of Olympus and these pots were on were ornamented at F Athens only in the capital of Greece and in this vase they would use red figure or black figure techniques with the techniques of scratch and that's how they would create these black silhouettes that can be seen. And also, they would use liquid clay as their base or material to paint. And these vases can be served as an everyday life where they can put food, water, or display it. Next, we have the Greek painting. Back then, Greeks would use these paintings as to emphasize the importance and accomplishments of the human beings. When the Greeks painted in their sculptures bright vivid colors and layered in gold, over time, this has been faded as if they stopped creating sculptures and that's why they instead go to paintings to show the accomplishments that they have made to tell a story as well but sadly most of the Greek paintings were lost and cannot be found for example here the Minoan painting Minoan painting was the first important period of painting in Greece. It is associated with the architecture of the palaces and is characterized by cheerful colors and the natural of the painting itself in order to create the forms. And this painting is called the Bull Lipping, which is created to be exactly at 1400 BCE. In this painting, you will see that there is a man riding or trying to catch a bull while he is leaping for his life. And the figures right here is the bull that you can see in the painting. And that's how Greeks were able to see, to show the figures of how they were able to accomplish what the painting is meant to show in front of us. As I have said before, pottery was an important art form for them because it allows them to tell a story. And it is the most practical art forms at the time. They were able to incorporate basic principles of their culture or in the words of what they what they have created means arete it actually means for greatness and realizing what their potential was and how they contributed in the, in the field of arts their 
importance and accomplishments were seen all around the world and it inspired us to show that we can create our own art as well. Another was they contributed by showing the, their own aesthetics and what they can even create with the use of the materials such as limestone, marble, which now which they now use Parian marble as an alternative and how they can create with the wood and bronze to make a statue. The Roman Empire was one of the greatest and most influential civilizations in the world history. This period was lasted from approximately 100 BC to 300 AD. The more wealthy and powerful the Romans became, the more able they were to further expand their empire. The Romans were not contented with conquering land near to them. They realized that land further away might also have riches in them that would make Rome even more wealthy. Hence, their dread to conquer Western Europe. At the center of the city and Roman public life was the Forum which is this picture. The Forum was a rectangular plaza surrounded by public buildings, such as temples of gods and basilicas, where commerce and other public functions could take place. Many of the city's major events took place in the Forum, such as elections, public speeches, trials, and triumphal procession. The art flourished at that time and were often used by the wealthy to memorialize their deeds and heritage. The Romans admired the Greek culture and art. After conquering Greece, they brought many Greek artists to Rome to make sculptures. The art of ancient Greece had a great influence to the art of ancient Rome. These are the art forms. First is the Roman sculpture. Roman sculpture used different materials and covered by a broader range of subjects which they frequently depicted with veristic realism. They also have various goals in mind for their art. A lot of times these sculptures were one of themselves or their ancestors other popular subjects for sculpture includes gods and goddesses, philosophers, famous athletes, and successful generals. Our example here is at the right side, the statue of Minerva. This is an example of Roman sculpture. Second is Roman paintings. The Romans perfected the technique of creating mosaics and murals, uh, emphasizing natural themes such as landscapes as well as narrative themes borrowed from literature and mythology. The deep red, yellow, green, violet, and black were the principal use employed by Roman paintings. An example is at the left side of the picture which is it was a wall painting from room age of the villa of P the third art form is the mosaic mosaic was made during the roman period throughout the roman republic and later empire mosaic were used in variety of private and public buildings Mosaics are often used as floor and wall decorations and were particularly popular in ancient Roman world. The last one is architecture. And now we have come to the Roman architecture. Romans have contributed to the field of art with their own architectural designs and their architectural style can be seen all over 
in Eastern Europe. For example, like the St. Basilica di San Pietro in Vaticano on your right. Remember, there are other famous architectures such as Colosseums, but Romans are known to be creative in how they can create churches. Their church is called a basilica and it is known to be a very large rectangular shaped buildings that can be able to hold many people for their religious meetings or prayers and this basilica right here was designed by Donato Bramante, Michelangelo, Carlo Maderno, and Gian Lorenzo Bernini. And basilicas are usually measured three stories tall from the ceiling to the ground, which is almost as the same height in today's modern buildings. Now, ancient Rome are known to be responsible for much of the modern world. They are the source of inspiration in the modern world. For example, the ancient Romans are known for their arcs as been shown here in the Colosseum. The difference between the architectural styles of the Romans and the Greeks is that Greeks would create with the concrete but added a column while Romans are known for their arcs like this. They use the same materials but different kinds of style and their architectural styles can be seen all over Eastern Europe and their art has made a huge impact in today's field of arts. Now, sculptures such as this Roman bust, they are usually made of bronze and marble that were among the many types of art that can be found in ancient Rome. The difference here is that Romans would only create the body because it is specially commissioned to have the body only. They would only create a face or any parts of limb if, a, if that hero has done something great for the Rome. But usually, if that hero was found as a fraud, they would usually break the head and the arm so that no one can find out who was that person. And that identification was sealed forever. While the Greeks in their sculptures they depict more calmness or the ideal figures of a person in a nude. Now in this slide, these are our references. These acts as a resource in order for us to create a PowerPoint presentation just for you. You can pause the video and take a screenshot of it. And that concludes our report on ancient Greece and ancient Rome for art appreciation. Thank you.